Hey everyone, I'm going to cover one of the most common questions we get about hip impingement today, which is does it refer down past the knee to the calf, the side of the calf, the back of the calf? Some people describe, describe it as a sharpness, a shooting, sometimes a burning, tingling uh, type of sensation. Sometimes it just feels tight um, or feels odd or hypersensitive. Uh, I know I've had some type of feeling like that before too, in combination with groin pain in the front. So I'll cover that topic today. I'm Sebastian at Performance Play Sports Care, part of the locally world famous chiropractors in Coast Mesa, California. Now, a lot of people probably been looking at you for your hip, and it is important to look at hip function when we're looking at hip impingement, obviously, but there's things that do not seem to fit the bill. They don't come together. They don't, um, uh, the puzzle is, is disheveled, if you will. Um, hip impingement does not refer past the knee, and it doesn't even refer into the thigh. In one of the other videos we did, we talked about does it refer to the side of the thigh, uh, and it doesn't, in the short answer. Now, we could say that there's compensation associated with hip impingement that can create catching of nerves and so on and, and so forth. But generally speaking, if we're talking about the diagnosis of hip impingement, does it refer down past the knee? The answer is no. Now, some of you may be saying, well, what about piriformis syndrome? Uh, this guy back here, let's make sure this camera's in view. So here's the back, uh, front of the hip, hip flexor, uh, hip joint, and here's the rotators down into here, the piriformis, and then the glute muscles, and then there's this little guy here. This is the sciatic nerve that slides underneath. Well, what about the uh, sciatic nerve? Well, yeah, but that's not hip impingement. That's a compensation associated with it. My point is that this is a little bit more complicated than it actually um, than a simple hip impingement case. And I'm gonna use the standard Nutter's model, uh, uh, book, which is a, it's a reference that pretty much most medical professionals use to learn basic anatomy from. And so this is a representation that we talked about in the last video too. Uh, we're talking about all these distribution patterns of the L1, L2, 3, 4, and so on. Um, goes all the way down to the side of the actual calf over here, which is, this is the L5. And notice up into the side of the thigh, there's also L5 as well. Um, S1 is a little bit more of a down to the ankle, if you will, but also into the back of the calf. Uh, let's see if you see it down, you see it over into here. So this guy down into here. So S1 can also be part of the puzzle. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up today is because that um, fixing something like hip impingement or, or correcting it surgically if associated to stuff down into the calf, sure, yeah, maybe the uh, impingement, the, when it's released, it can essentially improve compensation. It can make it so this, these symptoms go away. And we've seen a lot of people with lumbar radiculopathies or sciatica, which have this type of presentation that also have stiffness of the hips as well. But let's not misconstrue this. The hip impingement itself, the hip structure, the hip joint, the front of the hip capsule, the uh, cam deformity, the pincer deformity does not necessarily directly refer down to here. It's just, uh, unless you're anatomically different, it's, it's impossible. Um, so there's some type of low back component is my point. So generally speaking, the way we tend to resolve this at performance place is we try to help out to reserve, uh, or resolve the neurological aspect first and then see what's remaining. Sometimes the hip impingement, although it may have come on sooner than this part right here, it may actually be more of a compensation. Now, some of you may have felt, well, I felt this way before I felt the hip impingement. This is just a little bit like hypersensitive. I can live with that, but I care about this. This is stopping me from doing what I wanna do. Right, we have to reverse order this. So you have to deal with this first, which is very simple. Um, usually it requires some form of um, physical therapy exercise, corrective exercise, stretching, mobility, lifestyle change, so on. Um, I, I know that people may comment in the comment box, well, maybe I need an MRI or x-ray to investigate it first. Not necessarily, um, because this is a mechanical issue a lot of the times. Like, I feel it right now sitting this way, but now I don't. Sometimes the MRI machine can be a little finicky in regards to, like, you're laying flat on your back. Like, you, it's, you may feel fine on your back while walking around, you don't. And so it doesn't show the way that you actually load. And so typically, with some type of rehabilitation, we need to make sure that we can desensitize the area here and then get full function back into the hip as well. 
Most of the time, these people do not require surgery, medications, injections of any type. Most people don't even require imaging, but they do require a good thorough physical examination that requires someone to actually stress test areas. Like if I was looking at my wrist here to examine what it was and what the structure is that's, that's generating symptoms and figuring out how to resolve it, pushing backwards, ah, that hurts. Hey, that's better, 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 and so on. So this is called load testing or stress testing. So I'd push back onto it, and if this generated my symptoms, there's a chance I may tell you as the client to not do push-ups because that's just irritating the whole thing for a short period, and then we put push-ups back in. And so habit changes, but also programming, like planks won't work for this person, but an elbow plank will. And so coaching, the exercise is important, how you do it's important, but also the exercise selection is important too. So when you're recovering from, from something like hip impingement, it usually uh, goes very, very well, but you need to have professional help too. Now, if you guys are looking for help too uh, as well, like this is a series, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, uh, watch the remainder of the series, and we have precious information on this series that covers how to turn in bed, what's the safest stretch, uh, and a lot of the questions and, and, uh, and comments that you, you guys may have associated to it. So subscribe to the channel, check us out. We are in Costa Mesa, California. If you really do want some help, but if you want a little bit more information about what we have too, which is curated to this, we have a webinar in the corner, which is also in the link description, which covers a lot of great information associated to hip impingement, as well as other diagnosis that are associated with groin pain. We'll see you guys next time.